Okay, today it's gonna be real talk, Malaysia versus America. Okay, so first thing I've realized after moving to America is that every single toilet I go, when I wanna go number two, there's no bidet. There's no access to water to clean my, my butt. Oh, Why you, is you, that? You have access to toilet paper everywhere. You clean it with that. But toilet paper doesn't clean everything. It's poopy. You know, I've gone number How two. How messy do you go? It's like normal. You know, sometimes it's hard. Sometimes it's soft. Sometimes it's in the middle. But whatever it is, oh I wash it with water. But like, you can still clean it. It'll get clean. With just the toilet paper? Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, let me ask you a question. If your hands touch poop, how do you clean your hands? With soap and water. There you go. Then why? But my hand goes and touches other things, so it doesn't. But just... your butt, butt sits what? on your pants and things. But again, how messy are you going? You can clean it's, it with toilet it's, paper. It's not about messy. It's about poop. There. Wait, wait, wait. Are you telling me you st you still use toilet paper after number two? Yes. That's what I'm smelling right now. Stop it! <laughs> that's, that's, Stop that's what it, it is. <laughs> okay, but seriously, I have questions about Malaysians' toileting habits. Okay, what is it? Why are all of your bathrooms sopping wet? Because. Like, okay, like seriously, like the shower is right next to the toilet, right next to the sink. So if you do any of those activities, everything just gets wet yeah. constantly. Yeah, it's it's because. Prime way to clean yourself, whether it's butt, whether it's your body or whatever, is with water. And so sometimes it spills throughout the bathroom and that's fine, it's okay. But like why can't you just like put up like a shower curtain, like have some separation between like the shower and the toilet? Nah, too much things to buy. Just wash, water, leave the bathroom. But like you can never wear socks inside your bathroom because it gets sopping wet. Why do you want to wear socks in your bathroom? Okay, okay, wear socks to toilet. Americans <laughs> Maybe because I have dry bathrooms because they want to have socks in the toilet. Maybe it's because it's cold here, so we do wear socks a lot. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. I can see that. Can That's see probably that. why. Okay. Oh. America, yes. I've got a question for you. Hit me. Why is all your breakfast foods filled with sugar? Why? Like, like pretty much we're eating dessert. As soon as I came here, we had like donuts, waffles, Pancakes. I don't. Everything's I don't fill with sugar. I don't see what the problem is here. That sounds amazing. That is the problem. As soon as you wake up, you want something nutritional. You want something that's healthy to get your day out right, like a chicken rice, Ooh. like um, I don't know, something like nasi lemak that has all the oh, you want you want that kind of food. Hi, hi, buddy. Hi, buddy. He's scared, he's scared <laughs> <butt>. <laughs> you gotta go poo poo. Oh, okay. <laughs> Okay, America, this yes. next thing here. When I move to America, I mean, I try to go shopping. So for example, the price tag says $5 for something. Mm -hmm. I pick that item up, I go to cashier, the cashier tells me $5.50. What happened between when I picked up the item and I walked to the cashier? What happened? Why did the, did the price go up? I mean, it's just called sales tax. It's not that novel okay. of a concept. For in Malaysia, sales tax is included. So what when you see five dollars, it's already added on, so you know exactly what you need to pay. Here I'm constantly second guessing. Okay, so I think I could be wrong about this, but I think it's because all throughout America different states have different sales tax. Even like the state above us, Oregon, doesn't have sales tax. So if you go somewhere and a tax is five dollars, it's five dollars. That's isn't that crazy? It's crazy. It's, it's very confusing. It's crazy, but it also kind of makes a little sense. I mean, America is so big, yeah. it would be really hard to regulate things across the entire country. Yeah. So I think that's why states have a lot more control in their government. Okay, so Malaysia, mm -hmm. I have a question for you now because one thing that just terrifies me and confuses me is why do you have so many roundabouts? There's no stop signs. Everything's just roundabouts, and it's so scary. All the cars are going so fast. I don't want to drive in them. Why do you not have roundabouts? Round roundabouts is, is one of the greatest things. Let, let me tell you this, all right? Okay, in America, yeah, you're right. There's no roundabouts. It's here. chaos. But in so roundabouts allows a four-way traffic to keep moving. But why do you need to keep moving? It's okay to stop. It's very organized. It's organized. People can take turns. It's organized. People can take turns. Whatever but it slows down traffic 
Bye, bye. It's slow. So you just think of this, huh? When you have a four-way, every time one oh, lane has to go over there in the truck, the ramp. Every time one lane can go, uh -huh. the other three lanes have to wait. So three lanes, 75% of cars are constantly waiting at every single time. As opposed to the roundabout, 100% of the time cars are moving. But if there's an accident, somebody rear ends someone, there's an accident, then all the cars are affected by that. Don't get an accident. <laughs> It's a good life lesson there. Yeah, roundabouts this is a great invention. No, I hate roundabouts. I think they stress me out. America. Okay, so this one, America, I'm very, very disappointed with you guys. I'm so nervous right now. Yeah, I. It's it's a touchy subject. I hope we don't we don't ever get demonetized. <laughs> but why does your country have so much guns? And why actually actually. Not only it has so many guns, but also it's so easy to access a gun. Like I could easily walk to Walmart right now, pick up a gun like an AR-15, which is a like semi-automatic gun, and like own it and shoot. Like how? How is it? <sighs> okay, so it kind of goes back to the roots of our country um, when we wrote the Constitution, and there are several amendments in it, and one of the amendments was the rights to bear arms, and it was in order to fight against, you know. England okay, and all of that. I Again, I don't have a lot of good answers for this because I think it's just been so built into the culture of like, it is our right to own this. Um, and I think Americans are very, we're very prideful people and we like to have what we have and not feel like we're being told what we can't do. Yeah, and I think the other thing is like, people like the freedom. People and like, people like want to feel like they don't want to submit to the authority completely. You know, yeah. they want to have some control and guns is their way of showing that and you know, I still have I think the argument has always been too of like well if you make guns illegal the bad guys are still gonna buy them and the what? good guys won't have them protect protect things so like I think that's an argument I hear all the time yeah I'm, I'm not gonna go into like the whole debate about why you need an or don't need guns but I just feel like personally for me I I don't agree with it I think we I don't think we should like completely ban guns. I think we, we should make it very, very difficult to get guns. I, I do agree that it should be regulated a lot more than it is today. Mm -hmm. Hi, buddy. Okay. Hola. So on a much lighter note, what is with the Malaysians' obsession over rice? Like there's so much rice in everything. You guys have rice for breakfast, for dinner, dessert, tea time, like there's always rice mango sticky rice all your koi's have some type of rice in it like so much rice okay so the thing with rice is rice is amazing because it is a blank canvas to anything that's possible if you think about it we can make like chicken rice nasi lemak. we can even transform rice to become porridge we can make rice noodles rice is so beautiful and you can add flavor to it you can even make it like you said sweet yeah you know so rice it's a blank canvas that you can create something. So that's why, but and even also, the thing about rice too, I feel like, it also allows you to enjoy other food. Because rice, if you have multiple mm. different dishes, the rice is like the main thing to use to neutralize and make everything tick together. Rice is the one that brings not only foods together, but people together. Oh, that was beautiful. You know, rice, man. That's why we eat rice. Okay, so this next thing here, you ready for it, America? Sure. Okay. The dollar note. Why is all your dollar note from one to 10 to 20 to 50 to 100, everything is the same color? First of all, that's a dollar bill, not a dollar note. <laughs> You're not you right. It, you call it a, a call note? It, they call it a bill. A bill. So you don't call it a note? No, I've never heard anyone in America call it a note before. I've been here for 11 years and I, I didn't know this. Are you serious? Yeah. What? Okay. 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 So why is it the same color? Consist it's all. It's, it's the values are different. Consistent consistency and like all the expressions of like seeing green and all of that. Like it's it's but, money. But then it's so difficult. Every time I'm pulling out like a bunch of notes, I'm like, wait, which is one? Which is twenty? I have to like look at the number. Literally, the number is right yeah, there. Yeah, but you have to scroll through it. If you got the color, you'd be like, one. You know, red is you know whatever color. Yeah? Like, how often does this affect your life? Like on a day to day basis. We, we don't use a lot of notes here. Bills. Bills. Yeah, that's true. We use a lot of cards. Like, it just, it's just, it's not that tricky to figure out what it is. Like, it, it looks different. Okay, so my biggest question for you is, 
why do Malaysians insist on speaking in like three different languages, like just peppered throughout their whole conversation? Well, because a lot of Malaysians are multilingual. We can speak a lot of different languages. Then just stick with one language when you're having a conversation. Okay, the thing is, when we are talking about something and you have, you want to use the right word at the right time to emphasize what you're trying to say. So, because for each word, we got three different languages we can choose from. And sometimes language A can convey the message a little bit better than mess than language B. So we pick language A. Okay, so but for my example, like I this has happened multiple, multiple times with you and your friends, is you'll be telling a story and the story will be one hundred percent in English, except for the punchline of the story. And then you'll <laughs> say it in either like Malay or Tamil or Chinese. Because and that, it's like why? Why? But, but that's my point. Because the punchline is the funniest in that language. See? Well, we, gets, we just got more in our library. You know, we can like, pull out more things. Yeah, you just, and like you'll like switch words back and forth, like and just like it's been so normalized. It is. Like yeah. you say, like tapao, even but though the, it's Chinese, right? Yeah, yeah. So the, or not bunkos, like tapao. <laughs> the disadvantage of that is we are never good at one language. We are decent at all of them. <laughs> yeah, so it's like jack of all trades, master of none. Yeah, yeah. But I like it that way. I think it's it makes us unique and special. Okay, so there's this one thing that kind of weirded me out after I moved to America. So there's this one day in the year, it's a random day, that all of a sudden you gain an extra hour. So it means that in that specific day, instead of 24 hours, you'll have 25 hours. Amazing, right? But then, six months later, there's a day that you lose one hour. So that day you'll have 23 hours. So this will completely mess up with your schedule. Right, like suddenly you have like so much light daytime and suddenly you have like so much nighttime, which is weird. I mean, Why? it dates back to the farmers and then they moved the time so they had more time to harvest and more daylight in the morning. And like at the time it made sense back in the 1800s, but now it doesn't make a whole lot of sense. It just makes it really dark when it's winter time and really bright in the summer like now. Hmm, so you're telling me, it's, so it's mainly because of farmers and agriculture. Yes. And daylight savings time. I will vote to end it. If you, I can vote. you can't vote. So I have a question for you, Mr. Malaysian. Hmm? What is with your power outlets? Like, what about it? So many things. Why do you have to turn on the switch in order to use the outlet? Why can't you just plug and go? Because it's it's that's a safety feature, right? But, so when you yeah. want power, you turn it on. When you don't want power, you turn it off. But in America, guys, in America, you just plug it in and it's good you to plug go. Plug it in and it starts. Yeah, it's good to go. But it's a safe, it's it's dangerous. Imagine kids. You but, can turn off plugs so that electricity doesn't come through things. But can't kids turn it back on to them? Like that logic. But imagine a baby or a toddler who doesn't know. So, right? But yeah, so it's on, but it's not like it's gonna electrify them. So you are you saying like so so if a kids are putting their fingers in the socket, it doesn't like shock. Yeah. Them. I could see that. But like okay. Yeah, cut off the line. Second part of that is and, 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 oh, sorry, sorry, one more thing. It also saves electricity. So you don't, it's not constantly running That's when you have a, things plugged such in. such a minute amount of electricity. But my other question is, why are your plugs so intense? Like the prongs that stick out of it like are crazy beefy and like the plugs are this big. In America, everything's just very dainty. It's just like a little, a little plug. Yours are huge. We like to be secure. Oh my gosh, like seriously. And it's just so hard when you power back and forth between Malaysia and America. Okay, so this next one here, I kind of struggled the most after moving from Malaysia to America. The fact that healthcare cost is ex is so expensive. It's, it's insane. It's crazy expensive. The fact that you won't know how much you're gonna pay when you go see a doctor for whatever treatment, the insurance company decides what medicine you get, how much you get, not the doctor. The doctor can prescribe something. But the insurance company can actually go back and say, actually, you don't really need this mm -hmm. and deny it. And deny it and you're not covered and you gotta pay out of pocket. So anyway, it costs whatever you think, how expensive uh, the US healthcare system is, it's actually 10, 100,000 times worse than that. It's, that's how bad it is. It is pretty bad. Like, I can't even disagree with you on this point. Yeah. Like, the American healthcare system has a lot of flaws and there's amazing doctors, but it is incredibly expensive. People go bankrupt yeah. getting medical care. And coming from a country that has free healthcare, painful. Okay, American, uh, what, is, what, what you got for us? What I feel got? like this one's really shallow. 
But it's one thing I noticed in Malaysia is that you can't, if you buy something, you don't like it, you change your mind, you cannot return things and get your money back. In Malaysia? In Malaysia. Mm -hmm. Like... It's difficult. It's yeah. so difficult. That's like right. it has to be in a really short amount of time. Mm -hmm. You have to have your receipt, the tags, everything. You have to have a reason. A reason, everything. And then a mm -hmm. lot of times you just get store credit. You don't actually get it back on your card or cash back. Yeah. Where in America, it is incredibly easy to return. Yep. Like... Yeah. I even bought too much milk one time and I went back to the store and returned it. Like, mm -hmm. it's so easy. And depending on the store, like some places take things up to a year after you yeah. buy it. Um, yeah, and sometimes you don't even have to the receipt. They can give you store credit. Like it's... But it's, but I feel like there's pros and cons for this. The, the cons is obviously like you can't return. Whatever you buy, you're like really committed to it. You have to commit. But the cons is the fact that you think, you're constantly thinking like, oh, I can return it. Yeah. If I don't like it, I'll return it. So you buy and buy and buy and buy things. And then you're like, oh, I need to return it. And you never do. And then you end up just keeping a lot of things. Yeah, it's actually kind of a smart system for stores to have a good return policy because you buy more thinking like, ah, I can change my mind. But then you forget or you're like mm -hmm. too lazy to go return it. So I see what you're saying. Anyway, guys, that's all we got for you. Uh, if you know of any other differences between Malaysia and America, leave it down in the comments below. We want to hear from you. Thank you so much for watching. If you haven't already done it, don't forget to like this video and subscribe. And we really, really hope to see you in the next one, all right? Bye. Love you.